Hello people who cannot sit at home, thank you so much for being here. This is an exceptionally exciting video for me to do because this was our road trip all over California. Uh, to be exact, there's going to be 27 stops. All of them are listed down below. This trip was in May. It took me quite some time to edit, but I am so happy that I did because I think this is the best that California has to offer. So at first I wanted to cut out this section where we go and get onto the airplane. This is me in the airport. We are still wearing masks. This is still somewhat of a COVID time, at least the end of it. And in Canada, where we are from, this was still kind of the case. But you know what? I thought I leave it because it is interesting to look back at this and see how we were experiencing the world back then. Though it was only in May of 2022. So overall, everything that is in this video, I think is going to be current for years to come because all of these stops are pretty stationary. So over here is our eating the ketchup lace, which is like a Canadian thing. I highly suggest you try them when you're in Canada. But anyway, heading to LA. So we landed in LA at nighttime and by the time we uh, got the car and drove all the way to Palm Desert, which is where my brother was, me and my boyfriend reuniting with uh, my brother and his fiance. Anyway, they were here for about a week. This amazing resort is called Marriott's Desert Springs Villas 2. They definitely highly recommend it. Beautiful. I wish we stayed longer, but we only had one night there. So we kind of packed up and went on our way. So the very first stop for us in the morning were the Salton Sea Visitor Center. So this was a beautiful kind of way to start the day. It is definitely gorgeous scenery. It was free because we asked if we could just kind of look at the beach. We didn't want to do a hike. We didn't have the time. And uh, the gentleman said it's okay. So we were there for like just maybe 10 minutes. What we were trying to do is we were really on the way to our main destination, which was Joshua Tree National Park, which we knew is going to take us the whole day to kind of explore. And over here is us getting close to it. Here's a gift shop. We already started seeing some really cool animal life. And here's the overall view. Very deserty, very gorgeous. Definitely uh, quite, quite different from what we're used to back in Canada. So here are the first cacti that we saw. These, I believe, are called Choya cacti. They are really pretty. They have like the lighter lemony color at the top and they go darker. Very interesting. This whole area you get to explore, kind of walk around. Of course, you cannot really come too close to the cacti um, because they, they will sting you. Definitely beautiful photo opportunities, especially when the sun hits it. So if you can time visit to Joshua Park in the, during the sunny weather, definitely do that. It just has this kind of cool glow. Uh, very beautiful. So this is called Cho Chola Cacti Garden. Now we're just making our way. Here's another kind of stop. There were many stops. Uh, when you enter the park, they will give you a map and you can definitely stop in as many places as possible. We definitely were selecting because we were a little afraid that the park is huge, but we needed to cover the park and we needed to kind of move closer to LA by the end of the day. So it was a little, you know, high packed. Some gorgeous scenery. This is the Skull Rock. Very cool. Uh, it took me a while to get where the skull part is. I think this is the best area like the best uh, angle because some of the angles don't really look like it but once you see the skull you cannot unsee the skull it's really cool and again gorgeous rocks we kind of hiked and climbed some of them there's a cool hole in the middle of it um, there were lots uh, there were a good amount of people but not like too crowded which was great and here is a viewpoint beautiful very uh, you get to park and yeah Coachella Valley is the name of this and here are, we're slowly getting kind of further into the park in the Joshua Tree, and we're starting to see the Joshua Trees. They have these cool, I don't know what they're called, fruits, nuts, I don't know what that is. But as we are getting closer and closer, we're getting more of the Joshua Trees, and you will pretty much start noticing how it's more, 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 more. <laughs> Hidden Valley Trail, we did this trail for, actually we spent about an hour here, amazing highly highly recommend make sure to do this trail just beautiful vegetation gorgeous kind of different flowers gorgeous cacti uh beautiful scenery 
it it wasn't too challenging in terms of like walking i think you could have done this probably in half an hour but we, we kept on stopping and taking photos the challenge was actually the heat for me because this was my second really day out of canada and i was not used to this was almost like plus 40 degrees celsius not sure what it is in fahrenheit definitely watch out for that bring water here we are at the pioneer town very interesting village made to look like or I'm sure it was before the village of pioneers. It was free to enter and there were a number of cool stores, really like this pottery place. Uh, very cool stopover on your way out of Joshua Tree. And over here we're actually heading back to Palm Springs. That's where I really wanted to see the Marilyn, the very beautiful Marilyn. Uh, she was in uh, Boston, but she got moved to over here. Beautiful statue, gorgeous, really beautiful, really well done. Uh, over here is another cool art installation. This is all very close to the Maryland. If you tap a little bit on the water, you have beautiful um, ripples. Palm Springs Art Museum is over here. We, of course, didn't have the time. That That's one thing I wish we had more time. Uh, so we didn't have the time, but that Palm Springs Art Museum looks fascinating. I probably would love it, but we were going forward so we stopped over at this um airbnb i'm gonna of course put down everything down below beautiful view there was a bit of a challenge getting our cars up because it's a very steep hill upwards you got to be a really good driver but you can always leave uh your car downstairs and just take the two minute walk up the views of this place compensate for the you know difficulty driving up there Beautiful, um, beautiful cabin. There's four of us, so everybody was really well. You know, everybody had the bed. Over here is our beautiful snack in the morning, and we are heading to Los Angeles. This is my second time in LA, and overall in California. I've actually done a uh, road trip before all over California, so love la uh gotten a coffee over here we decided because uh the other three members of my team they never been to la we decided that the bus would be the best way so this is i think it's called city line they have three lines uh really cool bus i mean in terms of in terms of the structure in terms of like jumping on and off everything worked well there were lots of buses the challenge was is that we did take three lines we bought the pass for three lines of the bus trip but we did not really have enough time for that so if you only have one day in LA maybe just buy the two line pass of the bus or do your own thing to be honest me being second time in LA I felt like I've seen a lot of this that they were showing if you want me to give you the things that I would have done instead of the bus please message me down below because it's somewhere in my notes and only if you know, if there's interest, I will definitely let you know. Just a second before I was showing you the Fairfax High School. This is where Red Hot Chili Peppers and a bunch of different other celebrities went to. Uh, over here, we're at the um, at the walk, the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Uh, lots of different celebrities. This is by the Chinese Theater. Robert Dumal, uh, Cher, Sandra Bullock, Vin Diesel lots of celebrities it was so much fun i totally touched all of the people's handprints have sanitizer it's so much fun and over here is me hugging the oscar man and over here all of us were for the first time in in and out burger uh we don't have that in canada at least not that i'm aware of very cool love the food definitely recommend some pretty purple flowers as this was spring they had lots of purple flowers i love that these buildings are the same architect that built the uh, trade center world, Tra world trade center in new york and over here we are at the beach just checking out and because this was getting closer to the end of the day we got pretty hungry we went to a uh, taco place in monica pier santa monica pier great tacos gonna leave this also down below um and really beautiful decor so over here santa monica pier we decided to have a little walk see what it's all about this was already getting a little dark so lots of uh so there were a number of street performers music lots of shops of course 
definitely worth to visit, definitely worth to go. Because there is of course a bunch of attractions and there is of course gorgeous ocean. So here is me very happy showing you. After about half an hour it got pretty dark and uh, we checked out further the pier and we noticed that there is a drone show. We were pretty impressed with that. So it turns out Botox had their 30th year anniversary, 30th or 20th. And it was uh, really beautiful to see, free show. Definitely one of those good coincidental things that uh, we absolutely loved. Never seen a drone show in my life. This was my first time. So this is the next morning. We stayed at the Hotel Carmel, which was a very small hotel, but it had a lovely breakfast place downstairs. And overall, it was a really great location to Santa Monica Pier. That's why we stayed and there was four of us. So yes, it was a little tight in terms of space, but it did its job. Over here is us heading for Malibu. We already see the surfers, that whole kind of surfer culture. There was a guy kind of shining his surfboard or waxing, whatever he was doing. It was really cool. And uh, really like the Malibu Pier, definitely one of those stops that you need to stop at. Parking was a bit of a challenge, not gonna lie, because it's a bit on to the side, like it's a little further, like it's more west from, from LA, but it's possible and it was free. Over here you can see these are uh, fishing rod kind of like devices that you can uh, fish with and lots of pelicans. Very cool to see those guys. And he flew away. The day was actually kind of cloudy. At least we thought so. It's gonna change. You will see. Uh, but uh, yeah, there is a. So we're still at the at the Malibu Pier, and there's a really beautiful store. Definitely go in. Yeah. Anyway, just a really beautiful pier. You can actually eat in there too, and there's a cafe. But we were not hungry because we had the breakfast already. This is Santa Barbara Pier. We are basically heading our way kind of towards the west. So we're going through a number of piers. Uh, definitely also another one of those that's fun to walk around. And there is a seafood fest uh, plate that was $169. And um, there's lots of different sea creatures in the windows that you get to look at. Beautiful. I found it fascinating. Here's a sea urchin. And different crabs. There's like a little hole in the, uh, in the pier and you get to see all of these. I'm not sure what they are, but... Uh, it was really cool. And of course, pelicans. I, I seem to really like the pelicans. I've never really seen too many of them in my life. So it was very surprising to me that they would just be walking around right in front of people. Not really scared. So again, the weather was not the best. But it wasn't raining, so I guess and it was pretty warm. So I guess that's, uh, that's good. So over here you will see how the weather changes because right there it's pretty much goes from the cloudy LA to really sunny because I think we went through mountains and yeah it became extremely sunny in the span of like 20 minutes. So right now we're heading for Solvang which is this Danish village and the whole thing is Danish and it's actually pretty large. I thought this was going to be a couple of houses but no this is fairly large kind of area that you get to explore and you get to eat. So what they have is of course a lot of like Danish kind of souvenirs and things like that, but they also have uh, what they are called 
I'm probably gonna butcher this Ables Kyver. I don't know. It's kind of like a sweet dough with a raspberry jam that we got. I don't have a video of it, but it was one of the best things I've had. You have to have it. It's at Solvan Restaurant. It's like a little window that you just order. It was, I don't know, $5 or something like that. And then when we got actually hungry, we went to Copenhagen Sausage Garden. It was a great experience as well. You get to choose a bunch of sausages. There's like a million sauces. And between the four of us, I think we split like four sausages, but we cut it up apart so that everybody gets some flavors and everybody got whatever sauces they wanted. It was so much fun. Over here, we're at the Kristen's Point of Hope. It is a really just beautiful view. There is also a kid's playground that they have like dinosaur eggs right nearby. So perfect for the kids and also really cool to see this gorgeous view and uh, yeah, great, great stop. Now we're heading further. This is called, the next stop is called Madonna Inn. Now I wanted to initially stay at this place. Just Google the photos and the rooms of this inn. You will want to stay here too. It's beautiful, but they were all booked. So we just went in to see. Over here, we are going further. We are at the Bubblegum Alley. This is at St. Louis Obispo, or at least going closer to that city. Pretty disgusting. Uh, actually, my uh, my trip mates did not even want to go there. <laughs> I found it fun. If you've been to Seattle, it's a very similar kind of uh, wall, just smaller. And over here, we are at uh, doing a little bit of a hike. It's called Terrace Hill open space and the hike is actually about I don't know it took me like half an hour if you're a little more fit it probably will take you far faster but it is a really steep uphill hike you park downstairs it was free to park at least at that time and free to enter it was great okay now this next stop is called Bruce Munro Light at Sensorio it's a basically immersive experience during nighttime where you see tons of lights, uh, fields of lights, and if there's wind, they move with the wind. Gorgeous, gorgeous, because it's actually really large, so it takes you about an hour to just walk around and take it all in. Uh, it's still going on. I know it's going to be going up until 2023, uh, but definitely check it out in terms of hours. There's another section of this immersive experience. It's actually made out of wine bottles and inside there's like a bunch of lights. Looks very cool from close up and from far away. Over here you can see how it is from further kind of distance. They have a bunch of viewing spots at the space. It's definitely a really worthy exhibit to attend. Make sure to book tickets in advance. Now over here is the next day. This, this place is called Morrow Bay. And in there, we found our first sea lion. Very exciting. And the reason why we were there is because of a really lovely place. The name of this place is Frankie and Lola's Front Street Cafe. And we went there for breakfast because the reviews are really excellent. We met a really cute friend along the way because we were waiting a little bit. And we sat outside, ordered our things, and the portion sizes were really large. The food was really, really well done. Absolutely recommend you need to go here and I even got a cinnamon bun for the road and right by the breakfast place there was a antique kind of car show and there was also like a kind of submarine off to the corner over there too definitely recommend the submarine section to check out it's actually really interesting So over here we are driving now on the Highway 1 and this is kind of like the beautiful coastal drive that we're going to start doing. Uh, first, this place we stopped over where there's tons of sea lions. The name of this coastal kind of area place is Friends of the Elephant Sea Visitor Center. Now what you need to know about the seals is that they're not there as I understand all the time. I think maybe there are some at all times but Definitely in the spring, like right now, that was their kind of season to be on the shore. There's uh, The lady actually was right there explaining it. To be honest, I don't remember. There are so many intricacies. But uh, it was really cool to see them. They were all kind of chilling, relaxing. It smelled 
something. <laughs> uh, but it was worth it. It was really amazing to, to see these guys enjoying the sun. So at this point, we actually said bye to my brother and his fiance, and uh, the two of us went further, and we did the beautiful coastal drive. Just look at this. Uh, amazing, amazing. So it's definitely a little nerve-wracking at times, like just uh, look up how close it is to the edge. So you definitely need to be a good driver. You definitely need to be very mindful of what's happening. And I would probably, if this is your first time, I would not maybe go on this drive in like rain or slippery conditions. Uh, but oh my God, is this drive one of the most beautiful drives in the world? I think this is the most beautiful drive in the world. The drive has a bunch of stops. There are not a lot of actually like food stops. So definitely I suggest snacks. Over here we got coffee. The coffee was astronomically high and very, uh, very expensive. So definitely bring your own coffee, bring your own snacks. There's not a lot of options really. And even if there are options, they are pretty busy and the lineups are pretty big. This was in May on the weekend. So that could have been the reason, of course, but still best to um, to stock up. We went to this Henry Miller book library. It, it was okay. Uh, if you're into books, maybe go, but otherwise no. And over here, this is the shop of a place called Nepente. So the, the restaurant Nepente is actually very historic. Really over here, you can see some of it. Uh, really beautiful. The wait time was like hour and a half. So we for sure did not wait, but it's definitely beautiful. And if you have the opportunity to sit there and eat from, from the reviews, it looked like it's a beautiful place. Now up next, we're going to see the Keyhole Arch at the Pfeiffer Beach. Now the Pfeiffer Beach entrance was not free. I think we paid, I don't know, maybe like 10 or, or 20 American dollars to enter for a car. And it was quite the drive. It's, it's a little bit of a drive away from the main highway. But I would tell you this, this place is really worth it. I have been to Cabo a long time ago in Mexico and this reminded me so much of that. Uh, beautiful, beautiful kind of rocks sticking out, mountains, turquoise waters. Um, we couldn't really swim in there because this was made, wasn't really the swimming season. Um, but the kind of sitting at the beach looking at this beauty was amazing. And over here we are at the Bigsby Bridge, which is kind of like the Big Sur main bridge destination. Definitely a great place to take lots of photos. And over here we have turned into the land. Now we're off to the coast, though the coastal drive all the way to San Francisco is beautiful. But we really wanted to check out Yosemite. And this is the breakfast before. I cannot find the name of this place, I'm sorry. It was great, the view was amazing. If somebody knows this place, please comment down below. But what happened was, and this is, it already has happened, so over here I'm filming, but I am so, so disappointed, is that we showed up at the Yosemite Park entrance and they told us that you need to book in advance, like two days in advance, to even drive through the park. Forget about camping, we don't want to do the camping, we just wanted to visit the park, you cannot do that. So whoever uh, is planning a trip, make sure to know your rules. I was very, very disappointed. Over here is a really amazing Airbnb that we stayed at. This was at Exeter, California. They had a beautiful pool. They had like a little, you know, kind of ranch. The lady took us on a drive around. They showed us uh, their kitchen kind of coop over here with an egg. It was the most loveliest place with the loveliest people. If you can, if you're in that area, I highly, highly recommend this place and these guys. Of course, the link is down below. And this is the following day, all nice and rested. We have headed for the Sequoia National Park. If you see over here, the trees are all burnt. It was actually really, for me, distressing to see so much, so many trees burned. But they say that the trees actually do well when they are burnt because they have like a antiseptic, regenerative property to it. And over here we are doing the Morro Rock Trail. Now this is a trail that if you're afraid of heights, do not go. It's pretty high up. It's uh, fairly thin, meaning that you are very close to people. But the view at the top, just look at it. It's 
amazing, 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 amazing. And this is part of the Sequoia National Park, so you just pay the entry of the park, and this is part of the experience. So now we're kind of heading further. We're going into the actual park, seeing the gorgeous sequoias. The trees are ridiculous. Over there you saw the person compared to the tree, and it's just, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> Here's what I assume is the Sequoia pine cone. At the Sequoia Park, we did a bunch of hikes. This is like a home inside a log. It was interesting, definitely worth a little bit of a hike. I think it was like a half an hour hike. And uh, over here is the Sherman Tree Trail. Also really interesting because this is the biggest tree. Now, I think there's a little bit like of a caveat to this tree. It's like it's not the tallest and it's not the widest, but it's the combination of the two. Correct me if I'm wrong, something along those lines. It's it's definitely a really very uh, noticeable and huge, ridiculously tall tree. Here it is. So over here in this little hole, you can actually see that there's burnt inside, so the tree almost kind of covers itself up on the top. Over here is the center where you can learn more about the trees. Over here is the amazing rock that's kind of stuck on the top. There's so many things at the Sequoia Park. I actually, there's tons more, but uh, I didn't have time to film everything. I was kind of in the moment. And over here is our last night in California. We are close-ish to LA now. This place is called Simi Valley. And the unusual place about this Airbnb is that it has tons of peacocks all around. They are pretty loud, but it's so cool. And this concludes our amazing California trip. I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe, like, and share to my channel if you enjoy my videos. Thank you so much. Bye.